Jesus. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said in Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. He said, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Say, I will obey, I will, obey. I will serve him, and I will spend my day in the prosperity of God, and I will spend my years in the pleasures of the Lord. The pleasures of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Concerning Jesus in Psalm 53, the Bible said, The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper Amen. in his hand. There are years in pleasure. Pleasures of the Lord is the will of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. Not sensuality, but the pleasure of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's the promises of God. All we need to do is obey and serve Him. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. I say God is a good he God. Is a good God. So I want to touch quickly the, the, the how to enjoy God. Praise the Lord. How do we truly enjoy Him? Amen. Amen. God is to be enjoyed, right. not endured. Right. Somebody say marriage is to be enjoyed, not endured. But they are in the plan of God, it's two, it's both of them. Marriage is to be what? Enjoyed, enjoyed and endured. Praise the Lord. Amen. But there are a lot of endurance and in marriage before you get to a, the true enjoyment. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In life, there is always endurement before enjoyment. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Is my mic working? Is it off? So who put it off without my permission? was not on there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Amen? Amen? So, now, to enjoy God, you have to feast on God. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? While I was meditating on it, and the Lord opened my eye to see what I have not seen before in John chapter 6. Amen. And it has to do with the communion but beyond the communion, there is a sense, there is an, a, an aspect of the communion which I have overlooked, which I believe some of us also have overlooked. Praise the Lord. And that the Lord opened my eyes to in John chapter 6. Praise the Lord. And in John chapter 6, Jesus did the miracle and, and multiplied bread. And the people ate the bread and enjoyed the bread. And when the Lord left, and they were looking for the Lord the next day, they came to the Lord, and the Lord told them, look, you are looking for me not because you ate the bread, or you saw the miracle. Amen? Amen. He said, not because of the miracle you are coming. He said, but because you ate the bread. Praise the Lord. In other words, you missed the purpose of the miracle. The miracle was to display my divinity. But you have lost sight of the purpose. Amen? He said, now you are looking for your stomach to be fed. He said, the reason I feared your stomach was not just to feed your stomach. That was the reason for the miracle. God has a reason for everything he does. That's why we must be spiritual minded and not be sensual minded. If you are carnal minded, you miss God at every turn. We must be spiritual minded. We must be sensitive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and... Uh, they said, after the Lord has said that, they said to him, you know, they, they said, what shall we do? Jesus said, Don't, do not labor for meat that perish. That is verse 27. Then they said to the Lord, what shall we do then? The Lord said, what you need to do is believe on the Son of God. Amen? He said, believe. Praise the Lord. And they asked him again. These are the people who saw the sign. They asked him again in verse 30. What, is, what sign are you there to show us that we may see and believe? <laughs> what work do you do? Amen. Prove yourself. He already proven himself. I they were still asking again, what are you going to do? Amen. 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 They said, Moses gave us 
bread from heaven as it is written. Then the, the, the Lord began to talk to them. Amen? Amen. And he said in verse 32, very, Then Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I said unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Praise the Lord. And they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Amen. And he that believeth to me shall never thirst. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I said unto you, they, that you also have seen me and believe not. Mm -hmm. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. And he that come to me I will no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Praise the Lord. Amen. So having this conversation, and the Lord began to tell them that, look, I am what you need. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 32, he said, I am the true bread. Mm. Write that one down. In number two, in verse 33, he said, I am the bread of God. Mm. He's the true bread. Mm. And he's the bread of God. Praise the Lord. Mm. And in verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. The true bread from heaven. Amen? Mm. The bread of God. Praise the Lord. The bread of life. Praise the Lord. And in 51, he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. You see that? So he, he unveiled himself. He revealed himself as the bread, as the true bread. So there are false bread. Hello? I said there are false bread. But he said, I am the true bread. So any other bread are false. Praise the Lord. Then he said, I am the Bread of God. So there, there is only one bread of God. His name is Jesus. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then he said, I am the, the, the bread of life. I am the bread that gives life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm the living bread. Can you, can you get the picture he's That's painting? Right. What is he saying? He was saying to them as the bread of life that I am the source. Right. Amen. Of life. I am the source of nourishment. I am the nourisher. It is me you need to survive. Remember, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But what he was actually saying to them that I am all you need. I am the bread you need to feed on that you might have eternal life. We feed on physical bread that we might have physical life. He said, but you need to feed on me so that you will have spiritual, eternal life. So that you will have the life of God. Amen. The bread of life. The living bread. The bread of God. Amen. The bread from heaven. The true bread. Amen. Jesus Christ is the true bread. Yes. He's the bread from heaven. Yes. He's the living bread. Yes. He's the bread of life. Yes. So he's all we need. He's all we want. Praise the Lord. To, 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 to live and survive and go through eternity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you with me? Amen. Say, Jesus is my bread. Jesus is my bread. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let me just read because of time. So feeding or feasting on the flesh. Remember, let me read the scripture, what, what it said from verse 51. I want to read it before I start explaining it. Let's read from verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh. Underline that, my flesh. Mm -hmm. The bread I will give you is what? My flesh. My flesh. We shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Hello? Hello? Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. You have no life in you. Whoso eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. Amen. And I will raise him up at the last day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Praise the Lord. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eat of this bread shall live forever. Now, feeding or feasting on the flesh is far beyond just taking bread and wine. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the bread and the wine are symbol of his body broken for us. So, it is, so feasting on the Lord is beyond communion. Just bread and wine. Praise the Lord. What does it mean to feast, to eat my flesh? What was the Lord saying? Was he just talking about communion? No. It's beyond communion. Praise the Lord. The communion is the, it's like baptism. Amen? We have been baptized spiritually into Christ. The physical baptism, the dipping of the water, symbolizes what took place in him. That we died with him, we are buried with him, we are risen with him. Praise the Lord. The act of communion is, is to remind us what has been done for us. But beyond that, we have to learn to feast on Christ himself. Amen? Amen. So, his flesh, praise the Lord, is our nourishment. So, feasting on Christ involves daily feasting on his person, presence, and power. Are you following what I'm saying? To eat his flesh involves what? Daily feasting, eating his person, his presence, and his power. We must be able to see beyond the symbolic meaning of the bread and have a revelation and actualization of its reality. We must have what? We must be able to see beyond the symbolic meaning of bread and wine and, and move on to the place of revelation and actualization Amen. of the reality of his person. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That we are not, when we take the bread, we should see beyond the bread and see Christ. Mm. As our source, Amen. as our sustenance, Amen. as our maintainer, Amen. as our nourishment, Amen. our nourisher. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? We must learn how to eat Christ's body and drink his blood every minute and every hour of the day. Amen. So therefore, when he said my flesh, what is his flesh? Mm. Or his body. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I caught the revelation while I was meditating on it. Mm. That his flesh mm. is all that he is. Mm -hmm. The flesh of Christ is what? All that he is. Amen? Mm. Are you writing? You write it down. The flesh of Christ is all that Christ is and has achieved and accomplished for us by his finished work on the cross. The flesh of Christ, when you say, he that eats my flesh, is, is receiving him, receiving what he has done, receiving who he is. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Not just at salvation, but every day of our life, we must go to that fountain and drink. Hello? So, the flesh of Christ is all that he is, all that he has, and all that he has achieved and accomplished for us in the work of redemption. More also, his flesh is his very person. It's his very nature. It's his very being. The flesh of Christ is what? His very person. His very nature. His very being. Praise the Lord. You see that? So, to feed on the flesh of Christ is to feed on his person. It's to feed on his nature. It's to feed on his being. More than the bread, we must feed on the very being of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
His flesh as bread is the embodiment, the substance of all that he is and has. Amen? Amen? So, when I'm receiving the bread, I am receiving Christ and all that he is. Not in the piece of bread, but in his person and in his being. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So, that is the true nourishment. If I just take the bread and eat it and just drink the wine and chew it and swallow it, it's, that is not. I must see Christ. I must see his being. I must see his person. I must see his very nature. I must see who he is and what he's done for me. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And in my prayer, I have to eat him, Amen. his flesh, and drink his blood. So it is his person. It's my intimacy with him. Praise the Lord. Are you still here? His blood, his flesh as bread is the embodiment, the substance of that, of all that he is and has. So when I was thinking of the flesh, and I realized, oh, the flesh is the embodiment of all that he is. The Bible said in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead, body, Colossians 2, 9 and 10. It said in Christ dwells the fullness. In Christ dwells, so when I'm receiving Christ, I'm receiving the fullness of God. For him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when I'm receiving, when I'm feeding on his flesh, I'm feeding on the fullness of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So his blood as drink is the confirmation of him as my only and true source. Sustainer and maintainer of divine life. Hallelujah. I'll read that again. His blood as drink. When I drink his blood, his blood to us is the only source of life. He said, He that eats my body and drinks my blood does what? Has eternal life. So he is the only and true source and sustainer and maintainer of that divine life. The eternal life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Quickly. The Bible said in ha, like, let me give you one yeah. Let me just run through. I, just, I will read it. I don't, I don't because of time. One major key to feasting on, on the being of Christ having after having been born again after having believed on him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the, the, the first thing first is to believe on Christ. Praise the Lord. Having believed on him, you have to continually and daily feast on him. His person, his nature, and his being. Amen. We do that through meditation on him. Praise the Lord. But before I read that, let's read John 6 verse 10. This is what he said. This is the access. He said, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son, you must see the Son. Underline that word in this Bible, sees the Son. You have to see. Praise the Lord. You have to acknowledge. Amen. And believe it on him. So you have to see him. You have to believe on him. Then the next may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up the last days. So when we see a revelation, have a revelation, that's what it means to see, then we believe, we apprehend it, then we have manifestation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Which one is this? John 6. Oh, is that 16? Sorry, 40. <laughs> John 6, 40. I was wondering what this, that does not need to do with what I say. <laughs> 40, sorry. And this, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone will see the Son. Amen? Amen? Everyone will see it, see it, see it, see it, the Son. And believe it on him. May have. So the way to receive the things of God is first of all to see. Then is to believe before you have. See? See? Believe it. See it. 
believe it and have it. That's the principle. Praise the Lord. You have to see, have a revelation. You have to believe. Amen? Amen. So you have to see, see him as your bread of life. Mm. See him as the bread of God. Mm. See him as the living bread. Mm. See him as the true bread. Mm. Then believe him. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And meditate on him. Amen. Psalm 63 verse 6. There is something when we think upon the Lord. Revelation, sorry, Psalm 63, verse 6. What did he say? Let's read it together. When I, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Amen. Amen. How do you eat his flesh? This is the secret. Mm -hmm. He said, When I remember thee mm. upon my bed. And meditate on thee in the night watches. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not on things, not on my problem, not on my spouse, but on Christ. Amen? Amen. When I think on thee, how many of us go to bed thinking on Christ? How many of us wake up thinking on Christ? Praise the Lord. So he said, when I remember thee upon my bed, so meditate, you have to, I was listening to Pastor Chris, he said, see him walking the street of Jerusalem, yes. when you are reading the Bible. Yeah. See him, his compassion. See, so see him in his action. See him, you know, put a spit on the ground. And you have to see all those pictures. Praise the Lord. And you, you have to muse yourself, muse yourself on Christ. Praise the Lord. Are you fascinated by Christ? Amen? Amen. Are you fascinated? Amen. So we need to be fascinated by Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why my most favorite testimonies are testimonies of salvation. Amen. It, it, it amuses me just to see how Christ changes life. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. We must be fascinated by Christ. And not allow any other thing to fascinate us. Mm. Amen? Amen? We should not allow anything to excite us or even cause anxiety. Why? Because someone said, I fear to God, I fear God too much to fear a man. Mm. Is it uh, the Martin Luther King that said so? He said, I fear God too much to fear a man. Amen? Amen. So we need to be fascinated with Christ mm. Jesus. That's how to feed on him. Amen? Amen. So we need to think upon him. Amen. We need to consider him. Hebrew 12 3 tells us about consider him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Consider him. Hebrew 12 3. Amen. Amen. It says, For consider him. So you need to consider Christ in every area of your life, every day of your life. You are feasting on him. In your prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have no time to develop all that. Verse, we have to behold him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 The more you behold him, the more you become like him. Praise the Lord. Knowing that the true essence of knowledge is to bring us to the truth. And the true essence of the truth is to bring us to an encounter with a person of truth. Praise the Lord. We learn to come to the knowledge of the truth why the knowledge of the truth bring us to an experience of the truth? Who is Christ? Amen. Or else we have a form of godliness without power. Mm -hmm. In other words, the reason why we study the word of God is to know the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, is to have knowledge of the truth. When we have knowledge of the truth, the truth we know is supposed to bring us to the person mm -hmm. of the truth. Did you get that? Yes. You do get that. The truth, you know, is supposed to bring us to the person. Of to the person of the truth. Amen. The knowledge, the knowledge. If we have knowledge of the scripture, and we do not have the uh, the experience of the person of the truth, we it's mere. It becomes religion. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. In academics, in school. In 
Circular studies. They teach you how to do things professionally. You, they give you what? Knowledge. Amen? But spiritually, knowledge, the essence of knowledge is not information. The essence of knowledge is truth. So the world does not deal with truth. The world deals with information. The kingdom of God, we deal with truth. Hello? Amen? Amen? That is why Pilate, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Because he, he does not deal with truth. He deals with facts. He deals with information. Tactic and strategy. But in the kingdom of God, we deal with truth. Amen. God is truth. The Bible said grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? So the essence of knowledge is to bring us to truth. Jesus said to these disciples, to those who believe in him in John chapter 8, he said, if you continue in my work, then shall you be my disciples. You will know the truth. But the truth make you. How does the truth make you? When you have an encounter with the person. Of the truth. So knowledge is not enough. Experiential knowledge is what we want. Praise the Lord. We know the truth, but the truth is to bring us to the person of the truth in the kingdom of God. So that we can encounter the person. You do get what I said. Do you understand yes. what I'm trying to say? Amen. 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 So the essence of knowledge is to bring us to the truth. And the essence of the truth is to bring us to the person. Who is Christ Jesus the Lord? Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. So now, I, ha I, I still have to go through this sermon again. Yeah. Because I'm rushing it. I didn't like it. But I just act close with this because of time. Oh, I promised myself I will not get here again. But I needed to drop this message. Please, pardon me for taking the extra time. Let's, uh, Malachi 3, 16. Mm. But did you understand what I'm explaining? Yes. yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. That we need to what? Feast on Christ. Think on Him. Meditate on Him. Imagine Him. Praise the Lord. Amen? Imagine Him. What did I say we should read? The day that feared the Lord spake one to another, but the Lord hacking ahead him, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that fear the Lord, mm. and them that taught, mm. everybody say taught upon his name. They, them that taught mm -hmm. upon his name. Mm. That means, these are those who fear God. That's right. Now in Romans, oh, they, they, they just going wide. <laughs> in Romans 1, the Bible talks about because they did not retain they God in their thinking. thinking. Mm. So the way to feast on Christ is to retain him in your thinking. Morning, night, and day. In prayer, that is what prayer, this is what fellowship is. When you sit down to pray, just think of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just call his name. Just think of him. And, and be conscious. Because sometimes we pray, we pray, just we blow things. No. Settle down. There is a place for intellectual prayer. We worship God with all our, not just our emotion, but with our understanding. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 That's why I love when, when, when Minister Trinity pray. She includes creation. Thanking God for creation. Thanking God for existence. Thanking, so it's not just beyond, it's not just bread and butter. It's not just finances. No, no, no. The wonder of his work as we sang. We, want, we have to pray for the wonders. Of, so it has to take someone who think upon God. Praise the Lord. So that we don't have a, a minor picture. Our prayer is not circled on. No, no, no. When you are praising, when you are worshiping, you, the Bible said that the Father declared the glory of God. Someone was asking me, why did God create all this galaxy and galaxy and galaxy? Why there is only life on the earth? I said, it is to display the wonder of his beauty. Mm -hmm. I said, all those galaxies were necessary for this earth to be in place. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, only God knows. If the gospel is not enough for you, you will not believe. Those who don't want to believe, they will not believe, no matter what yeah. they say. Yeah. They will keep yeah. looking for questions. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
So the way to feast on Christ, think up on his name. It's not just taking communion. Amen? Amen. It's, 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 did you, do you see him in the communion? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you see his love? Mm -hmm. Do you see his power? Mm -hmm. Do you see his beauty? Mm -hmm. Do you know the wonder of his person? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let's begin to think like this. Mm -hmm. Begin to amuse yourself with Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the center of the universe. He's the center of worship. Amen? Amen? So begin to think upon Jesus. And your life will change. That's how we feast on him. Meditate on him. Factor him. Consider him. Imagine him. Praise the Lord. Meditate on him. Can we have the communion, please? So I've read all the scripture that we need to, to, to read about that. We're just going to take it. You can put it behind it. Just leave it there. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me discharge those who are watching. And then we we'll take the communion. For you that are watching, if you have not made Jesus your Lord, we want to give you the opportunity to do that. Amen. Because if life without Christ is crisis. Yes. You can't have peace anywhere else except in Christ. Amen. So to give your life to Christ, say after me. This is what I did. This is what most of us here done. I've done. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I believe. I believe. You are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. And I thank you, thank you for saving my soul. Jesus. And I thank you that you died on the cross and shed the blood of my sins. You were buried and you rose again. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sins. I renounce sin. I renounce Satan. I renounce the world. And I declare you are my Lord and Savior. I take up my cross to follow you. I will live for you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You pray that prayer, I pray for you. May the power of the devil be broken over your life. Amen. The Spirit of God order your step to where you need to be. Amen. In the name of God, the Father, Amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For every one of us, I declare. May the hand of the Lord continue to rest on us. Amen. May God answer your prayer. Amen. May God meet you at the point of the need. Amen. May God see you through every situation and circumstance. May the power of God work for you, work through you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.